Look, I'm just sitting here and I feel like I want to share with you guys just the journey that's brought us here to our tiny home in, uh, in New Brunswick, chilling, very content, very happy, but man, it's been a weird ride, okay? So long story short, uh, two and a half years ago, our TikTok got big. We started doing the news updates on TikTok that, thank God, uh, transferred over to Instagram and we got a following there. Because TikTok deleted my account with a million followers about three months ago, four months ago. They also deleted my backup account, but you know, no big deal. We have dealt with insane suppression, censorship, shadow banning. I mean, if, if you want proof, just go back and look at my views from a year ago and then look at them today. It's insane. I don't know. I One of my, one of my followers commented one time when I was bitching about these things. He was like, well, what do you think? It was going to be easy to fight the biggest machine that's ever been built, you know, in, in known human history. And I was like, yeah, that's a good point. I guess I shouldn't have, you know. Things were going so well for a minute though. Long story short, over the last year, we have lost our sponsorships, right? Um, they didn't like some of my opinions, <laughs> obviously. Uh, some of them did come back and, and I'm grateful to them. And obviously we try and toe the line. I mean, the funny thing is my opinions are my own. What we preach here on this channel, I think anyone that follows is unity, coming together, overcoming the egregious corruption of power that all of us are dealing with right now. You know, so having said that, let's fast forward. So I'm supposed to go down to hang out with a good friend, Carrie Blakinger, shout out, um, LA Times reporter. She's a legend, okay? She's a good person. So she invited me down to do this like journalistic thing down in New York City. This was in, uh, God, I guess it was in, July anyways a couple months ago so I go down and uh, as I'm going over the border I was driving down I get stopped at the border my car was searched I was searched I had to explain to them who I was what I was doing I gave them my biometrics and then they gave me a two-week limit to stay in America so I'm Canadian I'm supposed to be able to technically come down there and stay for three months uh, anytime I want that is the agreement our countries have. I have asked multiple people if they've ever heard of something like that, the two week limit. No, no one's ever heard of that shit. So, so then it was, this, this was right when they had canceled my TikTok account, man. I mean, we've tried so many things. I have traveled from Ontario to PEI, to Georgia, to New York City, to Toronto, to London, to Ottawa, everywhere in between. We've made, podcast with Tim Kennedy, Bryce Mitchell, Robert O'Neill, Chris fucking Webby, Imagia Dillon, okay, Spike Cohen, Libertarian Vice Presidential Candidate, okay, and uh, I just feel like no one even fucking knows that we've been doing all this stuff, and every cent that I've made, I have put back into this thing, and I'm not going to lie, the podcasts have created zero revenue, the YouTube has created zero revenue, and uh, basically, I blew all the money trying to expand the channel, but uh, because of the censorship, we just never, it just never went anywhere. I don't, I don't know what to say. I mean, thank God that Instagram is still pumping my shit. And I gotta say this, Mark Zuckerberg, I, I, to me, you're an all right guy, man. At least, you're, at least you're letting the fucking videos play. Like, it'd be amazing to know what it's like to just have the treatment of a normal creator. Like if they actually just let the videos organically do what they do, we would be, it'd be insane. But listen, I'm not trying to hear, I'm not trying to be here to bitch and whine and, you know, start a big pity party. I'm just trying to got, like share with you guys the journey this has been. And it's been like pounding my head against the fucking wall, the brick wall. So having said that, I mean, we are on the precipice of a new chapter. We got the website coming with the VPN. It's super, I'm super excited about it. But yeah, man, um, it's been a weird, tough year. But uh, shout out to all the people that have stuck stuck through it with me. And shout out to, you know, guys like uh, Robert O'Neill, um, Chris Webby, Bryce Mitchell, uh, and, and even Sam Tripoli. We're going to do a podcast soon, Sam, I hope. Everyone that, that is there and, and, and understands the struggle, because I think a lot of people don't even understand, like... Oh, that guy's got a million followers. He must be on easy streak. Like, nah, man, like we're day to day over here, son. I mean, it's still, I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm very happy. I'm, I'm pumped about everything that's, that's about to happen and everything that's happened. But it's just, they haven't given us an inch. 
without a battle. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm pretty sure there's a team of people sitting there at TikTok that are like, their, their job is to figure out ways to fuck over our channel. Because here's some other stuff that happens to us guys. First, first and foremost, like people have told me that they have unfollowed me uh, without, with like automatically unfollowed me. People have to re-follow me all the time. They're unable to like my videos on TikTok and Instagram, that transcends. So they'll hit the like button, it won't let it do it. They're not allowed to share my videos. I've had supporters tell me that TikTok is um, uh, restricting their deposits so that they cannot support me. Like we're talking, Diabolical shit, bro. Like they are doing everything they can to make me quit. They want me to quit. And then that doesn't even get into the bot farm attacks. I mean, I've had a thousand bots in my lives telling me that they're coming with little eye emojis. Like this is just on a day to day at this point, man. Like we are, <laughs> we're on the list. Hey, look, Ma, I made it. Look, Ma, I made it. I'm on some list. But the funny thing is, all we do here is try and have discourse about world events and try and weave through the bullshit of the dual pronged propaganda fucking assault blitz that we are under, that we've been under for the last fucking five years or, or more, ever since COVID, that's for sure. This is very long winded. I just wanted to post this guys, just so you get an idea of who I am. I mean, I've worked in politics 10 years. I wrote two novels. You guys have actually been awesome this week. We're, we're starting to get some sales. If you guys want to support the channel, uh, I independently published two novels, Run Charlie Run, Confessions of a Middle-Aged White Man, both black comedy, satirical, very rude, crude, in your face. If you think you might like that, go check it out. They're available on Amazon. But yeah, man, it has been a, a blessed struggle. Is that like a good way to put it? Like, but just so you guys know, like things are not good. Things are not fair. Freedom of speech is on its last legs. And I'm not just trying to say that to scare y'all or be hyperbolic. It's, it's just, I think if you listen to this video and you listen to the things we've gone through, like an account deleted with a million followers. Like, do you know how much TikTok shot themselves in the foot by doing that? Hey, Jack, get over here. Get. Like when my videos were pumping back two years ago and before we had caught the eye of CIA, FBI, whoever the fuck, we would get, what does he have in his mouth? Oh, a stick. Okay. <laughs> we would get 100,000 views on the video out the gate within the first hour every time. No problem. Done. People, the, 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 the interaction was insane. 10% like ratio at least on any video, sometimes 20, comment section littered with people having discourse, talking, debating. And they've taken all of that, man. They, they, they have found ways to like fuck with all of that. And uh, so look, like I apologize that I've had to resort to stuff like GoFundMes and stuff, but man, like I don't think you guys understand what they've been doing to us, like the sabotage that we faced. And like, that's why guys like Cancel This Clothing Company won't even talk to me. And I don't blame you, Ian, because I think you're scared to interact with me because you know I'm on that hot seat. You know they're watching me and, and, and I don't blame you for not, you know, reaching back out and doing something that clearly all the people would love to see us do a collab. But regardless, I don't even blame you, bro, because I wouldn't want to touch me either. I wouldn't... Huh. Anyways, we're toxic, we're the black sheep, but we're still fucking here, and that's because of you guys. So look, man, thank you so much, everyone. I don't know why I made this post. It's just been, it's been a long journey. I feel like I just had to share some of that because I, I feel like a lot of you maybe don't realize who I am or what this channel is or, or what it stands for, and here it is. Here's, here's the end. Here, here's, here's the uh, coup de gras, motherfucker, okay? This channel stands for... The 1% versus the rest of us. This channel stands for fuck the distractions, fuck the division. If we can come together, we have all the power. They can't do anything without us. That's the trick they play on us. They think that we need them. We do not need them. Who's them? The government, for fuck's sakes, obviously. They need us. And we need to remind ourselves of that so that we can remind them that we are the ones that actually should be calling the shots. We are the ones that are the public, you know, the private citizens. They are the public. Anyways, I love y'all. I ain't stopping.